What you see in front of me is the Mercedes-Benz EQA. It's effectively the electric version of the GLA, and it happens to be Mercedes' smallest EV. And this is what you get with it. Now, this gets a differentiated front end. You very clearly notice this blanked out grille with these 3D Mercedes stars here. You get full width lighting, much like the EQE and the EQS. And even the headlamps, they're slightly different in terms of their details. And you get this blue highlighting here, which sort of denotes that this is an EV. And of course, the bumpers, they're slightly different too. They've been smoothened out. They're a bit more smoother than, say, what you get in the GLA. So, yeah, you get that overall slightly differentiated look with this. Now, there's really not much to differentiate the EQA from the GLA when you see it in this angle. But yes, you get these 19-inch wheels, which are done up in this sort of eco aero efficiency kind of format, which gives the EQA a drag coefficient of 0.28. Now you notice that the rear is really quite different from the GLA. First of all, you get this full width lighting again here, which goes with that whole Mercedes EQ theme, which also means that the number plate now sits below here on the bumper. So yeah, that whole leaf, it's got a slightly different look from the GLA. And this is what you get in terms of the boot space. Now in terms of charging, the EQA will do fast charging, DC fast charging at up to 100 kilowatts, which gives you 400 kilometers of range in about 30 minutes. And in terms of performance, it's only a front wheel drive, it's not all wheel drive, but you get 190 PS and 385 Newton meters, which gives it a zero to 100 time of 8.6 seconds and a top speed of 160 kilometers per hour. As you can see on the inside, again, it's very similar to the GLA. You have that same sort of uh, design to the dash, this new steering wheel that came with the updated GLA this more open central sort of tunnel design, this uh, backlit uh, sort of motifs over here and all the ambient lighting, but there are some minor differences. For example, with the EV, you get this rose gold finish to the vents and of course, different dials and gauges in the instrumentation, but this is positioned slightly differently from the GLS, so you get a few more features. You get a head up display, you get a 12 speaker Burmester audio system, and even the navigation, you get all the augmented reality sort of aids. Now, in terms of other features, you get powered seats for both the front passengers, dual zone climate control. There's no ventilated seats. You get this split sort of panoramic sunroof. Yeah, and in terms of safety, you get seven airbags and 360 degree cameras also, which is something that you don't get in the GLA. Now, aside from this, you have the usual Mercedes sort of features of the automatic emergency braking and so on. And then, of course, you have all those uh, sort of regen modes. You get a maximum regen mode, you get a strong regen mode, and also that intelligent sort of recuperation function in the EQA as well. Now, this is what the back seat of the EQA is like. You notice that this is how I'm seated here. Here's the look at my headroom. So, yeah, again, it's very similar to the GLA, but again, keeping with that sort of rose gold theme, you have this uh, rose gold sort of copperish fabric on the seats. Now coming to the main question that is the one of range and the EQA will do 560 kilometers as per the WLTP cycle from its 70.5 kilowatt hour battery pack. Now we don't know prices yet. Prices will be known on July 8th when this car launches, but we expect it to be priced at about say rupees 60 lakh in line with what its competitors are. So what do you think about the EQA? Is this an EV that you're interested about considering it's now in a segment with quite a few rivals? Let us know in the comments.